Hello and welcome back. We're continuing our season where we're looking at MySQL uh, tutorial type things. And we're sort of getting to the, the end of some of the things I wanted to cover. Uh, we've gotten through a lot of basics. One of the things we have not talked about is names and naming standards. I want to spend a little time on these because it is something that does matter and uh, is very helpful, particularly when you start getting into larger databases, as in a large number of tables or a large number of stored procedures or even complicated stored procedures because it's very much like coding in general. You want people, people to be able to jump in and have some clue about what you're doing and where things are. The first thing I want to look at is table names. And whoop, let me flip back over here. Um, there are a couple of different ways to do it. Uh, the first one I want to look at here is show you this is uh, this list here are tables that are generated by uh, Django, sort of the way it build stuff by default. You build out models, it's got its own little structure, and then based on the names of classes and objects, it builds out table names. Now, the thing that's worth considering um, and that they do is one, is if you look, you have like these, you know, the auth underscores, and then you have these Django underscores, and RSS app is the name of the application itself. So in this case, you have some, uh, these, auth tables are for uh, data around authorization. The Django are around its uh, its internal storage and, and things like that. And then you have the application tables, which have all of their various you know names and organization. Now, the nice thing about, the thing to think about with table names is that you're probably gonna see them in a list like this. I mean, even if I do like show tables over here, I'm going to see this long list. Now, in this case, they're not, you know, they're not ordered or anything like that. Um, but normally I'm going to see it in, in some way that's going to be ordered probably by name. But I can also do some things that I can look for names based on, uh, based on like a, a string within the name. In particular, it's nice to have things grouped. Uh, for example, here I've got these feed related things are all together because they're the app and then feed. Um, I use LKP for lookups, but I've seen uh, XREF, I've seen a lot of uh, sometimes just L or list or things like that for uh, you know, lookup or uh, relational type stuff. Like if I look at the data here, it's just got you know a couple different little records. And this is just as a sort of like a category type field. Sometimes it starts with CAT. But what that does is that pushes those together when you're looking at a list and it makes it easier to find what you're looking for, particularly, you know, like if you look here, and I granted this is all databases, but if these were columns, you know, it can get it could get long fast. And so in this case, that's uh, or in a case when you're using you know these correctly, like here, these are these are all the uh, things that come off of a user, then you can group them by name. So you want to be consistent is really the key so that it if somebody's looking for something they're going to be able to see it uh you know for example like user you know maybe you start with a there's a user table and then there's user address user contact user blah 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 so you'll all you know be able to see oh user and then he, here are the things that are the uh, sort of the details or the relationships that come off of that that's not always easy. You know, it's not always possible. Like in this case, uh, we have feeds and then we have users, but you don't have feed user. Instead, you have user feed, but at least, you know, between the two, you can pick one of them. Now, in this case, the way Django does is it uses all lowercase and uh, underscores to separate things to sort of high, you know, to highlight where the differences are. Slightly different approach that you can take, which I did, uh, which was not as consistent here. You can see these LKPs do not start with a capital L, um, which originally was done in the hopes that those would all float to the top because they would be lowercase or float to the bottom. Uh, didn't quite work out. But these use, um, other than that, they use camel case. 
which can be useful to, you know, when you get into something that's a little longer name, uh, then you can do three or four words and it's still you know, sort of easy to pick them out. But then you run into case sensitivity issues sometimes with the database, uh, with the SQL. So it's actually would be easier to, instead of using camel case, is use, you know, underscores or something along those lines so that you separate the words and make it very easy then to read. Uh, particularly if you look here, if these were all underscores, instead of being pushed together, it would be feed, feed underscore item, feed underscore out, feed underscore out, underscore item. And so you'd be able to see, you know, you'd see a list of names. So um, let me just pick like, uh, let me just do this. So you'd be ta see table like user, and then you'd see user address, user address, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know why I want to do that, but let's say user contact, and these would not necessarily be in order, uh, user employer, user employer, uh, I don't know, details, you know, something like that. Just throwing a few of these together so you could pretty quickly see that, hey, this is the user, but here these are user things. Uh, and sometimes you'd see something like user, uh, user contact, user contact phone, user contact email, you know, something like that that would even be details off of a detail if you get really complex and you know sort of long complicated names so there's something that is depending on the language you're working in stuff like that you may be very used to camel case however that can cause some you know some issues particularly when you get into aliasing things because depending on how you alias stuff yeah you know, if it's case sensitive you can get confusing quickly uh, which sometimes makes it within your aliasing useful to you know say so if i wanted to do uh let's say from here let me go to this guy where's our rss readers if i go from here and let's just do select star from uh let's do rss feed so here uh, when I'm doing that, if I wanted to do, uh, I could do like RF, and so it'd be nice in lowercase, and then it's just RF dot there, and then I've got my alias, or you know, if I do as, but if I do, or maybe I want to be consistent, I'm always going to do, it's my aliases are always going to be all cap. If I'm case sensitive, then that also is, is you know, pretty readable, and actually would fit with, most people would do it like this, they keep all of the keywords all cap so that may or may not be an issue uh, you may also do like uh, let me call this like i'll start everything with an a so it'd be alias or maybe an a underscore even and so now i could see real easy that i've got this oh this a underscore is an alias and then i can go find that somewhere in there so when you're thinking about it as far as trying to set some sort of a standard um, think about what how you want to do it with uh, aliases as well and again, the key to this is that it's a standard and it's something you stick with. If you bounce around, it's going to be really hard to, uh, to read your code. Now that's tables. Uh, with names, typically, the way a table is done is that it doesn't have an S at the end because each row is one thing. By it's almost by default they should all have S's because they're all going to have multiple records, but uh, that is not always held. Uh, you know, for example, here, uh, and the way they did it with Django is it's, you know, you have group, but you have group permissions because that's basically pointing back to say that it is a many to one relationship. Um, and so you've got, you know, so a user, there can be multiple groups assigned to a user. Um, the admin log, it's just your normal log records. Um, where they've got the S's typically is, you know, it, it has its own inner meaning. But that can be sort of complex and nuanced. And it's usually easier to just say, 
you know, I'm a, uh, this is what I, you know, we're either, we're always singles or always doubles. Now, another thing is uh, IDs. It is easiest, I think, uh, well, one, you should always have, we've talked about this, you should always have a single primary key that is not, that is just some generated number, has nothing to do with the data. That way, if the data changes, the ID never needs to change, and you should always be able then to find that record by, based on that ID. That ID will always forever go to that record unless it gets deleted. Now, some places like, uh, sometimes it's a table name underscore ID. So in this case, it'd be like uh, RSS app underscore lookup target underscore ID. It's easier for it to just be ID everywhere because then you don't have to worry about, you know, did they, how did they do it based on the table name? Um, the issue, the, and that means that every table, when you have an ID, you know that that's that record that table's id you may also do a pk so it'd be like pk underscore id or something like that to say it's the primary key the the challenge sometimes get when you have when you call it id is when you're using foreign keys because then it becomes inconsistent so if i go here and i've got um let's see let me do this so like if I take user Q, I don't even know what user Q is. Oh, I do, but uh, let me go, actually, let's flip to this guy. Let me go over to this one because it's got less data. Um, and it has a slightly different approach. So here, uh, like this one is now instead of using ID, I actually use the table name and the, the column because when you get into foreign keys, like you do here, this contract has an ID. So that's the primary key for that row. But then it also has foreign keys out to a performer in the performance table. And so I can go to that performer ID is going to be equal to performer ID in this table. So sometimes it's nice to do table ID or table name with ID or some designator that's the primary key so that you can actually keep the column names, uh, they'll be simple. You know, so if I wanted to link, I could do um, select star from contract, oops, except for it's probably a capital C, and then enter join performer on contract dot performer ID equals perform performer dot performer ID. So it's the same, whoops. So I'm using that same column name in each and then that's gonna link those together. Of course, don't have any records, so it doesn't help, but that can be a useful kind of thing is to just say, okay, I should be able to find that. And it's useful without looking at relationships or keys or anything else. Cause you say, Hey, if I've got a performance ID, you can look at that, which I did. I didn't even know, but I, and looking at those, I said, Oh, then that means since this is performer ID, this links to the performer table, the ID in the performer table, this performance links to the, the uh, ID in the performance table. So doing those, uh, using those sorts of, of name standards can make it really easy to see relationships without having to deal with keys and things of that nature. Now, when you get into uh, foreign keys and primary keys and indexes and things of those natures, it's uh, one, most places, most databases, they have to be unique within the system. Thus, and I think we've mentioned this, it really makes sense for your keys to be the, uh, usually to be the table name and then the, uh, the column name or the index, the, yeah, the column name that it's on. Now in this case, like see, this one doesn't have to have it. So it has performance ID, but if you look at performance, um, it has a primary. And so it's like, this one's not, I'm not seeing name collisions. Uh, I don't think anywhere. Um, well, I may have just lucked out, but I don't think I'm going to see anything. Oops, indexes. Uh, preference type, member ID. Yeah, so there's probably going to be a bunch of member IDs. Maybe not. Uh, 
uh, well, I'm sort of looking right, but I may have looked out that these had, oh, and I wonder if these are actual names. But in order to make it uh, unique, typically what you would do is like if I wanted to create an index on the final field in contract, then, you know, I'd be create index uh, contract final on contract final something like that and then it's like again it's very easy when you look at an index to figure out where it's at so if you start having issues you know if you have some sort of index uh, error that comes back you know particularly unique and stuff like that you can tell oh it's on the contract table i got to go look at the final column and i'll and actually i can look in these indexes on this table and i'll be able to see what that one is and see why there's an issue with it or if your if your performance uh, going through some performance improvements, then you can see which indexes are being used. For store procedures and functions, um, much like functions, and usually like you're you're going to want to sort of mirror probably the primary language that's using it. So uh, you know whether it's camel case or whether it's uh, lowercase or uppercase. A thing to remember with functions is they're going to be potentially used quite a bit within queries. So you want to, you really want to avoid like huge obnoxious function name length. The store procedures you're going to like, you know, you may be select, you know, star from my big procedure name and then give it some some parameters. The function may exist in 10 different places because a function could be things like uh, force things to uppercase. So if I have to do that for five fields in a table and my name, my function name is force all of the characters in this to uppercase, that's a long name and it's really annoying to write that several times. So you want it to be meaningful but concise and you might even do some, uh, it, but you got to be consistent. You maybe you know, do a little bit of abbreviations and things like that just to make it a little easier to use. And again, you're going to want to do so, sort of in the same vein as tables with store procedures and functions. You want to you know, ideally order the words within the name so that they are grouped if they are similars. Uh, for example, with store procedures, a lot of times it makes sense to start with the primary table name that it works on. And then that will, you know, when you sort them, it will group all of those together. Not to mention just you know makes things look a little better when it's consistent. Uh, and you're going to run into the same things, whether you want them all lowercase or camel case or uppercase. Just be consistent in how you do it. And then with parameters and variables, uh, again, uh, those are all over the place uh, as far as you know, the companies and organizations I've worked with. So I think it's just pick something. Uh, some play, it's just like variable names in any other language. Sometimes people want to precede them, uh, have some sort of prefix that says what type it is. You know, like all the integers would start with a lowercase i. All the uh, strings would call, start with a lowercase s. Or the varchars and you know may start with a lowercase v. Things like that. Um, just find a way to be consistent or check your you know if you're an organization, ask if they have a standards document and. You know, either go by that, or if it's missing some stuff, if it has gaps, don't be afraid to say, "Hey, this there's a couple of things I have questions about. Why don't we create standards for those as well?" Now, I, I know I've gotten a little just theoretical, a little bit, I guess, in this, a little more academic, but I think it's important to think about these things as we're getting into database development in particular. So, I think I'll just sort of uh, stop beating the dead horse now and wrap this one up and let you get back to your day. So go out there and have yourself a great day, a great week, and we will talk to you next time.